Today, I'm going to teach you how I created this Animusic style animation in Blender with zero additional add-ons. To watch the full animation, follow the link in the description. I'm not going to go into great detail on every step, so if you're new to Blender, this probably isn't a great first project. Now before jumping into Blender, it's important to have the final version of the music you'll be animating so you don't go back to the song and change something later on that would mess up the animation. Taking this into consideration, the first thing I did was create the song. To do this, I used Logic Pro X, but really any MIDI sequencer should do the trick. Because I wanted to make a pipe dream style animation, I knew I needed to choose instruments that could be played percussively by the flying metal balls. In other words, no woodwinds, brass, or the like. For the sake of simplicity, it's a good idea to keep the tempo consistent and make sure your notes are quantized so they align perfectly with the beat of the song. Now let's jump into Blender. Modeling the instruments was pretty basic, so I'm not going to cover this in great detail. For the symbols, I just made a circle, filled it, subdivided it with edge loops, and enabled proportional editing to pull up the middle and bring down the edge. The thickness was then added with the solidify modifier. I used a couple of modifiers on the drums as well, namely the mirror modifier to mirror the top and the bottom, and the array modifier set to object offset for the side details. The other instruments were pretty simple as well. Just keep in mind the pivot point of any object that will move has to be taken into consideration. For example, the keys on the marimba should be set to pivot near the back of the key. Be sure to head to the Physics Properties tab and enable Collision for each object that the particles will interact with. For the ball, I started with an Icosphere and gave it three subdivisions and metallic material. I went with an Icosphere because the geometry is more even than the UV sphere, which I figured might be beneficial when working with physics simulations. Once your instruments are done, think about how you want to arrange them, taking into consideration camera moves, lighting, and animation. Once again, this is something that you should finalize before you start animating because changing something later on would be a nuisance. All the pipes will be added later once the animation is closer to completion, so don't worry about those just yet. Once your scene is set, you can begin animating. The balls were added using particle systems. I started with the particles for the hi-hat by making a plane, scaling it down, heading to the Particle System tab, and adding a new particle system by clicking on the plus icon. I highly recommend naming the particle system now to make your life easier down the road. By default, the particles basically just drop out of the plane, but we want them to shoot out with some velocity. To do this, open up the Velocity submenu and increase the Normal value. The stream of particles needs to be more precise, so I'm scaling down the plane again. Now it can be positioned and rotated so the particles collide with the instrument. It looked to me like the particles were bouncing too slowly, so I went into the Field Weights submenu and increased the gravity to 4. After adjusting the position to my liking, I went to the Render submenu and set the Render As to Object and chose the Metal Ball. If the scale of the particles is incorrect, select your original particle object, head to the Object menu, Choose Apply and Scale. Then reselect your particle emitter, check the Object Scale box in the Render submenu, and set the scale to 1. The particle collection scoop is just a tapered cylinder with the top face removed and a solidify modifier to give it thickness. I'm also setting it to Shade Smooth and giving it the Edge Split modifier. Now, line it up with the particle stream and head to the Physics tab to enable collisions and check the Kill Particles box. I mean, come on, you didn't really think I simulated the whole ball return system, did you? Moving on. Here, I duplicated and repositioned the hi-hat particle object to use with the snare drum and the bass drum. However, it was at this point after turning the hi-hat particles back on that I realized that all of these objects were sharing the same particle system settings. In other words, changing the settings of one particle system will change all of them. To fix this, after duplicating the particle emitter object, Click the plus icon to make a new particle system and give it a name. Then select the previous particle system and click the Duplicate Particle System button. Now select the new particle system and set the particle settings to the new duplicated setting by selecting it here. The previous particle system will have to be changed back to its original setting because when you duplicate the settings, it automatically switches to the new setting. 
Okay, now it's time to align the particle animation with the music. Check the link in the description for my note calculator spreadsheet, open it up and put in the song information like beats per minute and approximate song duration in frames. This should be set higher than the actual duration. I suggest you round up to the nearest 500 or so. Now, set the frames per second of your animation and in this box, put the music start delay in frames. That is, if your music starts a few seconds after your animation does, that is after frame zero, put that delay in here. Last but not least, put the beats per bar here. I know this works for songs in the 4-4 time signature, but I haven't confirmed that it works for anything else, so you may have to make some changes for it to work with your project. Now, in your MIDI software, find the first note of the instrument you're going to be adding particles for. In this case, the hi-hat and identify the bar and the beat that note starts on. In my case, this note is bar one and it's beat 1.5. Also, if this note repeats, like the hi-hat does, take note of how many beats after the first note, the second note starts. For my hi-hat, it's one beat away. Put this information into the green boxes in the spreadsheet on the lower line. The information displayed in the orange boxes will be what you need to put into Blender. After copying over the start, end, and particle count, open the cache submenu and click bake. Once I had that one figured out, I proceeded to add the other particle emitters for the other instruments while also working on the camera animation and animated lighting. To make the pipes, add a Bezier curve, go to the geometry submenu, then bevel, and increase the depth to make it round, and increase the resolution to make it smooth. To adjust the shape of the pipe, go into edit mode and move and rotate the handles. To extend the pipe, select a segment and press E to extrude it. You may have to adjust the scale by pressing S to get the curves to just the right shape. This isn't technically a mesh, so it doesn't work like most objects, it just happens to be much easier to use a curve for this application. Once you have one pipe done, it's really easy to duplicate it and readjust it for the next one. I found it really satisfying to neatly arrange the pipes on the floor. To switch the camera to another shot, make a second camera and select it. In the timeline, move the playhead to the frame where you want the switch to happen and press Control B. This will create a marker in the timeline and bind the camera to it. Okay, so if you haven't already figured it out, your particles probably won't line up perfectly with the music. That's because the travel time from the particle emitter to the instrument varies from instrument to instrument. Though it's annoying that you have to fix this, it's really not that bad. Advance the timeline frame by frame from the moment a particle is created to when the particle contacts the instrument and count how many frames of delay there is. For my animation, most instruments had a 13 or 14 frame delay, but the bass was 18 and the steel drum was only nine. I decided to sync everything to 14 frames of delay, which meant that I had to move the bass particle animation ahead four frames and the steel drum particles back five frames. This can be done by going into each particle system for that instrument and adding or subtracting the necessary frames from the frame start and end times. Now we'll take a look at the animation of the instruments reacting to the impact of the metal balls. This is a pretty straightforward process and really brings the instruments to life. We'll start with the cowbell. First, make sure the object origin is located where you want the object to pivot from. If it's not set up correctly, you can position the 3D cursor where you want the object to pivot, select the object, and choose Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Now, using the playhead in the timeline, find the frame right before the ball hits the instrument and add a rotation keyframe. Then go ahead one frame, rotate the object down to a realistic angle and add another keyframe. Then select the first keyframe, copy it, and paste it a couple of frames after the second keyframe to make it return to its original position. Now to make the instrument have a little bounce to it, back up a frame, rotate the instrument up past its original resting place and set another keyframe. Now you can duplicate this set of keyframes and paste them whenever a ball hits the instrument. In my case, I was able to duplicate it out to make this series of three, then duplicate that series again anytime it repeats. The marimba keys and hi-hat are basically done in the same way as the cowbell, 
but the bass strings are a little different. I had previously made one string and duplicated it with the array modifier, so that had to be removed before continuing. I decided to use shape keys to animate the string. This means I needed to add more geometry along the length of it by using a multi-loop cut. To do this, just press Ctrl R and use the scroll wheel. Now go to the Object Data Properties tab and click the plus button in the Shape Key area to create the basis for the object in a stationary state. Now go into Edit Mode, select the section of the string where the ball hits it, and enable Proportional Editing by clicking here. Now if you move that section of the string, you can use the scroll wheel to gradually select the surrounding geometry. The default proportional editing mode didn't look quite right though, so I tried several other options before settling on inverse square. Make a new shape key and move the geometry into the desired shape. When you leave edit mode, the string will return to its previous shape. Don't worry though, because you can now adjust the value parameter of key one to animate the shape of the string, which is what we're gonna do after making another shape key of the string bouncing back the other way. Okay. Now it's time to start keyframing. This took a little finesse to get just right, but this is basically what I did. Mouse over the value of key one and press I to insert a keyframe. Now advance the playhead one frame, increase the value to one and press I to insert another keyframe. Advance the playhead again and zero out the value of key one. Then insert a keyframe for both key one and two. Go ahead another frame and increase the value of key two to make the string bounce forward and add a keyframe. One more frame forward, the value can be zeroed and keyframed. This sequence will animate one iteration of the string vibrating. I then repeated this process, but set the value to 0.5 for the third bounce and 0.4 for the fourth and final bounce. This sequence of keyframes can then be positioned and duplicated to align with every time a ball hits that string. I basically used the same process for the keys on the marimba, they just didn't need the shape keys. Well, that covers all the main techniques I used to create this animation. If there's something that I didn't cover, or if you want more detail on a specific step, please leave questions down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, please consider subscribing.